Okay, so what we're looking at here is a plant called Apios Americana or Apios Americana, and you can see it's got this like string of um, starchy tubers that kind of just follow all in the soil line here, just like an inch below. Um, it's a native plant, um, but that's not the one we're going to be talking about today. We're talking about its more rare relative called Apios Priciana. So I ordered these seeds from Mountain Gardens from Joe Hollis. He's got a farm or a, more like a paradise garden situation in North Carolina. And um, I've been pestering them for over a year for these seeds and they finally sent some to me. I think there's only eight in here. So let's take a look. Remove the bubble wrap and um, I have my little seed packet here. Let's open this up and see what's inside. So these are the Apios Priciana seeds. And looks like I have, how many here? Looks like I have seven. It was one little straggler. So we have a total of eight, which is how much I ordered. These are quite a bit bigger than the Price, or excuse me, the Apios Americana. And the Apios Priciana um, is a perennial nitrogen fixing native vine and it produces one giant edible root, which is different from the Apios Americana, which produces lots of little bulb, bulbs like you saw. Um, and Apios Priciana is very rare. There's you know, only about 25 occurrences of it in the wild, and maybe a couple um, passionate gardeners that are keeping the genetics alive. So what we have here is um, eight really important seeds. So I'm gonna share some of these with some friends that I know will take good care of them and I'm gonna grow the rest of them out myself, so stay tuned and subscribe for some more uh, updates on the Epios Priciana. Um, it takes a while for the, the vine to develop and produce an edible root, but I'm not really, for right now, I'm not really growing it for the food. I'm growing it just to kind of preserve the genetic diversity for um, edible natives that are endangered. So um, the best practice for these is to, according to Joe, I mean, the natural way would just be to you know, sow them directly. Hope they don't blow away here um, in the fall. But he says sometimes they can go through another stage of dormancy after that. So best practice would be just to pour some, um, not boiling water, but off boiling um, on them. Let them soak for, sometimes Sometimes people say around a day for that, for legumes. And that kind of helps the germination process. And doing that basically right before you plant them out in the springtime. Um, so I'm going to hold off on planting these right now because um, it's fall um, and I'm going to focus on sharing those with other people. But um, I want to encourage all of you guys to grow things that are uncommon, that are native to your area, things that are edible. And if you can find something like this that hits all three of those, it's like, that's perfect. Um, so I'm really curious to see how these grow. Apparently they grow pretty vigorously. They're not hard to grow, so it's kind of strange that they're so endangered and so rare. Uh, the vines can grow up to like 20 feet tall. Uh, maybe even more, and they produce these big showy pink flowers, so there's no reason not to grow them.